Hello, and uh, this series that we're starting off now is on uh, playing with uh, binary files, and I thought uh, a good way to start off is by creating some binary files. So I'm on Debian Linux here, and um, we're going to uh, compile some stuff, both for Linux and for Windows, uh, right here on my Debian machine. So I have this folder made, and you can see I've got two C programs in it. Uh, one is just a basic uh, shell output, and the other one is a very, very basic GUI dialog for Windows. Uh, both are just Hello Worlds. And then we also have a folder that if I list out, you can see has an icon file in it, which we'll be using towards the end of this tutorial. So first off, let's just cat out our uh, main.c here, and you can see it's very basic. We got our main function, and we got our Hello World returning zero. Okay, so let's compile that. I'm going to use GCC, which uh, if you don't already have installed, you can install with aptitude or apt-get or whatever package manager you prefer. I'm going to say main.c. I'm going to say the output is main. It's compiled. We got no errors on the output there, so we're going to say dot slash main, and it, we get hello world. Now, let's go ahead and do the same thing, uh, but for Windows. Uh, and we're going to use main. 32, Ming W32. Um, and the name of the file may change depending on uh, what operating system you're running. But if I say aptitude and I just search or apt-get if that's what you use, and I search for a package, I just say Ming W. You can see you get a bunch of packages, and you just want to make sure you have the one installed that you want. You can do 64-bit uh, or 32-bit. I'm on a 64-bit Linux system, but I'm going to be compiling for Win32. I'm going to be testing this out on a uh, XP 32-bit machine uh, in a virtual machine. Um, but all depending on what your goal is, 32-bit is good because it's 64-bit is backwards compatible. So what we do now is, once we have that installed, and again, this may change slightly, this command. Uh, I'll say i586-mingw32msvc, uh, and uh, if we hit tab a few times here, you can see there's a bunch of different ones here. I'm going to use uh, gcc. And again, this may change uh, depending on your distribution. Uh, it might be i686. But once you have it installed, you should be able to find it uh, using aptitude or apt-get. Uh, but one, now we're going to use that. We're going to say main.c. So we're using the same C file because uh, it's going to work on both operating systems without any changes. And we're going to say dash o. And because it's a Windows uh, executable, we're going to go on to dot exe. So we've created that. We list it. And it's right there. But of course, we can't run it on here uh, natively anyway. So let's go to XP over here. I have a web server set up on my main machine there. So I can say 192. Oops. 168. And we'll go to where I have that saved. So there it is. I'm going to download that. Save it. Open that folder. And of course, if I double click on this and click run, you're not going to see very much. We have no pause or anything, so it opened and closed real fast. So actually, let's do this, and uh, we will run CMD, and we'll go to my documents, downloads, dir out the directory. Sorry, this isn't any bigger, um, but you can see we have in there main.exe. When I hit it, hello world. So our executable worked there. Uh, so let's go back over here and actually, uh, no, I'll do that later on. I'm thinking about adding something to the tutorial I don't have uh, already planned. So let's do the same thing, but with our GUI for Windows. So let's go ahead and cat out main GUI to see our code here. Very, very simple. We're using the Windows header file, which I don't necessarily recommend because now you're using something that's only going to work natively on Windows and there are other options out there. But for the sake of this tutorial, keeping things simple without having to install any other libraries, we're going to use it. And we're going to just do a message box that says, hello world, with an OK button, and returns 0. So basically, same as our last command, but we're going to tell it the new um, file, which is main GUI. And we'll call the output win hello. Sure, that works. Uh, and we will hit enter. 
And so we've created that. We can list that out. You can see it right there. Get a little more information on them. So that's it right there. We're going to go back over here. If we refresh the browser, there it is. We're going to click Save. Come over here. There it is. And if I double click it and click Run, you can see we get our Hello World, but we also still get our little console window over here. So let's go ahead and remove that console window. You don't change anything in the code to get rid of that. You just give the um, compiler different arguments. So running the same argument as before, we're going to just add dash M windows, telling it that this is a Windows, not a DOS or you know shell or console program for Windows. Doing that same thing, so without changing the code, just adding dash M windows, coming back over here, re-downloading it, which Firefox will append to it a one there. Now you can run that, click run, and as you can see, we got our pop-up here, dialog box without the console window. So great. But you also notice that these programs all have the very basic generic icon because we haven't issued it an icon. Uh, so we're going to come in here and um, we're going to look, as I, get, as I said earlier, under my uh, RES, it's just a folder I made. You could have it in the same folder, but I put my resource files under a different folder. I have an icon. Uh, let's go ahead and display that out so you can see what it looks like. Icon. Well, there you go. It's, I made it 64 by 64. It's just an image I got off Google. And it's just a tux on a hard drive or something. So we're going to use that. So what we have to do is we have to use the compiler to make that into an object uh, that we're going to get to then embed into our exe. So we need what we'll call a uh, resource file. So we're going to say main.rc. Oh, sorry. Let's use Vim, a text editor, whatever text editor you prefer, main RC. And then here we're just going to type in a line. We're going to say ID space icon. And we're going to say where the resource is. So it's in my resource folder since we'll be compiling from this current folder, the name of it. And that is uh, pretty much it. There's other things you can do with the resource files, but we're just doing an icon. That's all you have to do to create that file. Now we're going to use the compiler and that file to create the actual object. So we'll say i586 and this time instead of GCC we're going to say win dress. Uh, so, so wind resource dash o and we're going to, I'll put it in that same folder the icon is in, but we'll call it icon.o because it's an object file we're creating. You can also do this to embed images for other uses in your executables, but we're not going to go into that today. But we're creating the object and we're going to use what we put into our resource file here. So no errors on the output there. Now if I list my resource folder, not only do we have the icon itself, which we can now delete. I don't know why you would do that, save it for future use, but you also have our objects. So now we can run our same compile command that we ran earlier. What we're going to add in here to use this resource file. And again, uh, we're going to have our no windows on this one. So I'll hit enter, no errors. And by the way, I keep overriding the same file. You do want to take that into account that um, uh, GCC and other compilers don't tend to warn you if you're going to overwrite a file. So we'll save this and it's going to create a new one. And look, we have an icon with tux on it. And we can click that, run it, same thing. No console, but we got a little pop up here. And control L to clear the screen. Um, so I just want to say also that let's say you do have a console or shell program that you're compiling and it's going to be running a lot of things, maybe going through lots of files and stuff like that. And you don't necessarily want the shell window to show up. You can do the same thing of dash M uh, windows on a non GUI program and that way you won't see that console or terminal window pop open. Uh, although if you do do a system call it may open up a new window that you when, will then see. Um, but 
all depending on how you write the program, but just be aware if you wanted a program to run in the background with no GUI, you can use the dash M windows uh, argument for the compiler. So that's a quick look at compiling, cross compiling, adding icons. Um, I know somebody will probably ask the question of how do you embed icons in an executable for Linux? And the simple answer is you don't because uh, is it's not a good way to do things uh, for lots of reasons. But I do thank you for watching. Uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to get into picking apart these binaries we just created, as well as other binary files. And then the week after that, I think we'll be diving into picking apart um, binary files that are network package uh, packages that you captured while sniffing, either using Wireshark or uh, TCP dump or Ethercap. So I hope that you're going to enjoy this series. I hope you look forward to them and uh, hope to see you next week. Uh, have a great day. Oh, and also, uh, as always, please visit filmswhychris.com. That's Chris with a K. Should be a link in the description as well as a link to all the notes for this tutorial. Thank you for watching and have a great day. And also, what did you guys do for the back? How long did you back up? Every time you committed to the back, coming up somewhere, you know, you're crazy. So, a little bit of detail on that. And um, as we were talking before we started this interview, he's going to touch on this lightly in this interview, but in the future, he's probably going to go into more detail uh, and more technical aspect of it in future talks. Sure. So, um, you know, what we did at this company is we used a versioning software called Subversion. If you enjoy my tutorials and would like to see more, please think about contributing to my Patreon account at patreon.com forward slash metalx1000.